Are there any mysteries right now about the universe that are getting you going that you're really working on or trying to figure out or that the collective is trying to figure out? Yeah, we're trying to unravel what happened uh, before the Big Bang. The Big Bang is thought to be the origin of the universe. Now, whether that was the origin of time, whether that was the origin of all matter, all energy, everything that was, is, or ever will be, is one of the hottest questions in all of science. We know we don't know for sure that our universe is unique. <clears throat> in other words, there could be other universes, parallel universes, universes that exist parallel to us in time or in space, you know, at the same time, or both. And there could be as many as uh, as as an infinite number of so-called universes within the multiverse, what's called the multiverse. So that is perhaps one of the m biggest uh, mysteries of all time, not just of you know modern day science. And until now, it hasn't been possible to identify ways to answer that question. You know, people ask me all the time. You know, do you? I was uh, there was a podcaster, not not as successful as you. His name is Sean Kim on Instagram. He's got 16 million followers. Um, he's been trying to get me on this podcast for a while, but you know, I had to go on. Uh, you, Brian, first, because, you know, fellow Brian, even though you spell your name with a Y, it's a, it's a uh, you know, we can, uh, mine's an anagram for brain. So that's the only advantage of, of my, my spelling. But he's uh, put out a tweet today or put out a post on Instagram, you know, 55,000 likes so far. You know, do you believe in evolution? So I wrote him back provocatively. I don't believe in evolution. Not at all. I'm not, uh, as a scientist, I don't believe in evolution. I have evidence for evolution. And that's the distinction that most people don't realize. We don't talk about belief. You know, I don't believe in, you know, unicorns or the tooth fairy either, but I also don't have evidence for them. So the difference between scientific pursuits that a good scientist should do, and not many, not all scientists are good scientists. There's as bad, many bad scientists as there are bad, uh, you know, accountants or lawyers. Uh, so it's not immune from that. Just because we study something that seems to have no practical benefit, people assume that we're all altruistic and just want to give, uh, you know, of ourselves. But no, we have a, a whole lot of uh, ordinary desires and, and greed and jealousy and envy and all sorts of petty things, as well as wonderful traits as well. Curiosity, imagination and this sense of wonder that's very childlike. And I think it's that's delightful. But we don't believe in things. A good scientist shouldn't believe in these, shouldn't believe, you know, uh, you know, in, uh, in germs. You should, we have evidence for germs, viruses, co you know, vaccines work, uh, all sorts of things that are controversial to, you know, general public. But uh, that doesn't mean I'm denigrating faith. You know, faith has a place as well in, in human endeavor. And we're creatures of faith and language. And because of that, people conflate and mix together belief and evidence and science is the one place it shouldn't ever happen. So I don't believe in gravity. I don't believe in the Big Bang. I don't believe in uh, in evolution. I have evidence for them. So the the thing, you maybe to answer your first question less flippantly, that's the thing that keeps me up at night is that the general public has a misplaced perception of how much they should trust in science and how much work and kind of activity of their mind they should outsource to scientists. So I'm trying to do my part through my you know public outreach on YouTube and and podcasts and so forth and my appearances on other shows like this to give back to the public who pay my salary a way that they can interpret and use scientific reasoning to improve their lives and improve their interpretation of this very brief moment in time in the universe's history that we get to call being young and alive. Mm. Yeah. It, or isn't there some, correct me if I'm wrong, isn't there some like doubts about the Big Bang right now? Like, wasn't there like some recent thing that, that came out about it? I might be wrong. I'm not sure. No, no, you're absolutely right. Yeah, there's always doubts. Look, the Big Bang is not the final word. Einstein is not the final word. Uh, and, and that's the beauty of science. Science is always provisional. That word may not be for, you know familiar uh, to many of your listeners, or maybe it will be. Science is provisional. I could be wrong tomorrow. And that's a good thing. And scientists, most of all, should be welcoming the idea that they could be overthrown, overturned, made irrelevant. Uh, and the swifter that occurs, the better, because the more frequently you can iterate, improve your reasoning and your thought process, the better, because then you can make more progress. Again, we scientists should be very stoic. We should believe that we have a very limited amount of time to be alive, to do the type of work that we do. Most scientists do their best work when they are young, when they are, uh, you know, kind of below 50, I'm over 50, but but uh, younger than 50 is kind of the common age, younger than 30 even in some cases to win Nobel Prizes, to win accolades, and so forth. So we have a limited amount of time, but we shouldn't be afraid of being wrong. And so I'm not at all afraid of finding out the Big Bang didn't happen. And in fact, I have videos on my podcast with many, many of the most eminent minds that I respect so much, and they believe the Big Bang didn't happen, or perhaps it happened in a different way than we had originally thought. 
But all these things are very recent uh, and developments in this three pound supercomputer that sits on our shoulders called the brain. This has only been around for, you know, 50, 60 years at most out of 200,000 years of being homo sapiens. So the fact that we can even comprehend this stuff, let alone prove it uh, via data, via evidence, via scientific theories and paradigms that get overthrown and replaced by better ones. So a good way to think about this is, you know, I've got a globe in the back. I don't know if you can see it. My my bokeh is so creamy lately. I, I've gotten uh, uh, addicted to lenses and, and stuff. Brian, it's it's an addiction that uh, you know. Hopefully, my wife will forgive me for. But uh, but the there's a globe in the back, sort of right around here. If you're got a widescreen, and uh, it's perfectly round. But the Earth is not perfectly round. It's not flat, and it's far farther from being flat than it is from being round. So if you think it's flat, you're completely wrong. You're unequivocally wrong, you know, the flurfers that believe that. But if you think it's round, perfectly round, you're also completely wrong in a technical sense, and then it's not round. And in order to specify its shape, we need a much more complicated, complex um, overturning of that. And that was a good thing, because originally people thought it was it was flat, and then they thought it was round, and for a long time they thought it was round. But thinking that it's purely round is also detrimental. It's thing it's flat means you you think you're going to fall off the edge of the earth. What does that do? That impedes scientific progress and exploration. People thought they'd fall off the edge of the earth. They, they were more reluctant. Um, it might be apocryphal. I'm not sure that actually was seriously believed by intelligent people or explorers even. Uh, but let's just say you believed it, that you could fall off the edge of the earth. That would make you reluctant to explore other frontiers. You, literally, you think you there is no frontier. You just fall off the edge of the earth. Um, and that was bad because believing that would impede the scientific knowledge that actually we live on a planet and that planet goes around. And there's still millions of people that believe this. As I joke all around the globe, there are people that believe the earth is flat. Um, now beyond that, believing the earth is perfectly round is also a mistake, less, less um, egregious, but it's a mistake. And that would also, if you were dogmatic about that, Brian, you would then, you know, remove the possibility that you could ever uh, determine that the earth is rotating and that the earth formed from a mol more molten state when it was more plastic and its rotation causes it to bulge slightly at the equator. Like some of us, when we get older, uh, the earth bulges slightly. It's not a perfect sphere. It's a flattened, what's called, you know, an ob oblate spheroid. It's more spherical than flat, but always being open to overthrowing your previously held paradigm allows you to learn more and more things. So in science, the controversy now that you alluded to uh, in your question is whether or not the Big Bang happened. I would be overjoyed to find out either way. People ask me, what do you hope to discover with your $200 million project that you co-lead in Chile? And we can talk about that. I don't hope to find anything. I hope to discover the truth and get closer and closer to it with more and more data, more and more evidence, more and more facts, and more and more of this unique capability that humans can do for now, which is called the scientific method.